Hi there, I'm Young Woo. I'll present how mechanical losses in transmission affect the system dynamics of robots. Let's jump in. So the motivation comes from the difference in transmissions we, we face every day. Some transmissions make a robot like a statue one part of, and some make it highly vectorable. And friction is the villain here, which makes the highly geared transmission hard to back drive. Unfortunately, there has been only a rough guideline, guideline to choose transmission respecting the friction. So we want to know more systematic way to assess performance degradation due to the friction. Secondly, transmission efficiency ranges from 70% to nearly 100% according to its type. Then, would it be possible to use mechanical efficiency as design parameters? To, ask, to answer these questions, I'm going to try something different, which is to use mechanical efficiency instead of friction and damping term. To do so, tracing down the frictional losses is the key, which takes place at the contact surface between transmission components. How do we do this? First, I included transmission components into equation of motion and analyzed the friction between rigid bodies. Then, assuming that we know the energy losses, I formulated the loss as a constraint to the system equation. Okay, let's begin with something simple, representative models. Then, I'll briefly discuss how to explain, expand the learnings from the simple model to more complicated and articulated models. Here's a one degree of freedom represented in a model of robotic arm with geared transmission. I call this rotor manipulator model. But analyzing contact mechanics and frictional losses associated with it in a rotating fashion was not that easy. So to further simplify the study, I introduced the wedge block model, which is perfectly analogous to its original. These models share a core property of transmission which is the direction of energy flow. Forward driving is to push the wedge with force F sub U and consequently moving the rectangular block. This is equivalent to commanding a motor torque to drive the link of a manipulator. Backward driving case occurs when energy flows in the opposite direction by pushing the block with force F sub X to drive the wedge. This is equivalent to an external force applied to the manipulator's end effector to backdrive the rotor through the mechanical transmission. Note that forward and backward transmission efficiencies are not identical. For next few slides, I'll derive what I call dissipative dynamics, which is the myth of this presentation. It is an equation of motion that embeds the mechanical efficiency of transmission. To get to this point, we need to work on three big chunks which are equation of motion of two body system, a constraint between bodies and energy loss represented by transmission efficiency. As a result, we obtain the dissipated dynamics of wedge block model that highlights the fundamental asymmetry that friction brings. The equation of motion of block and the wedge can be arranged as following, which separates forces into two groups. A group with inertial forces and external forces and the other group of Lagrangian multiplier dependent forces. Note that the drag friction is proportional to the lambda. And we label these forces as R, meshing forces. For concise notation, we may use a vector form like this. A constraint in the system is the ratio between coordinates displace, displacements. We can also use constraint Jacobian A and its null space matrix K to represent this. Finally, and most importantly, transmission efficiency dictates how much energy is lost in transmission. Surprisingly, power input and output of a transmission can be written with meshing force R and displacements of input and output coordinates. The matrix arrangement of the efficiency leads to energy constraint as given in the bottom. Let's take a look into the result, um, the dynamics of back driving case, and make some observations. First, we see external force back driving the system, gear ratio, and reflected inertia, 
Next, it gets interesting. We see backward efficiency is contributing to increase in both reflected inertia and input force or unmodeled force on the wedge. Finally, I want to note that there's a limiting case where backward efficiency is zero. If the slope is too stiff, the system becomes non backdrivable This phenomena is rendered by infinite mass in the equation of motion. To summarize this observation, efficiency affects inertia and the force propagation. Now, we have a good grasp of how efficiency affects the system. Then, let's generalize this approach to the multi-DOF system. To give high-level overview, first, formulate the Lagrangian dynamics in maximal coordinate, and then mesh the system with kinematic constraints, which basically formulates transmissions. And then in that transmission, there's energy losses. So we enforce energy constraints to the system, that system equation. Let's begin with a redundant system, then apply kinematic constraint and energy constraint to obtain a minimal system. First, Please notice that highlighted inertia, highlighted inertia and distribution matrices are affected by efficiency matrix E. Second, the dissipative force tau sub D has disappeared. Lastly, the model is dependent on the direction of energy flow and transmission. Let's visualize what's actually happening in the dynamics with a design study. Here's a 2DOF floating base leg with motors at each joint. Their transmission efficiencies are given. I want mechanical designers to use this framework, so let me discuss on discuss on the lines of design criteria. Firstly, task space inertia is calculated. The task space inertia is the mass you feel at the end effector, which would be the foot in this case. Notice that J is the end effector Jacobian. Next, force capability. The force capability is a maximum end effector force you can, you can apply by maxing out actuators. We assume that motor torques are bounded like square in the graph and see how much force it would translate to the end effector. And here's the result. First, task space inertia. Take a look at the black line, which is of a uh, frictionless system and blue is for the forward driving case, and red is for the backward driving case. Both ellipsoids of forward and backward driving cases are larger than that of the frictionless case. It makes sense because friction is dissipating energy, so you need to inject more energy into the system, and that's why it feels heavier. As for the force capability, it shows opposite behavior. Let's talk about the forward driving case first, the blue one. Let's imagine you are an actuator pushing something away. Then the friction in the transmission resists against your actuators or your effort that reduces the force you can maximally exert at the end effector. On the other hand, if you're resisting but collapsing under external load, now you're being back driven. In this case, you can exert more force because friction in the transmission is helping you to withstand against the external, external load. Lastly, I'll show you how impact mitigation factor changes with respect to efficiency of, of the transmission. The impact mitigation factor is a measure of back drivability. If the impact mitigation factor is close to one, it's subdued to external forces and collapse naturally. But if impact mitigation factor is closer to zero, which means it's not really back drivable, and the robot would behave like a statue. I'll compare force capability and the impact mitigation factor side by side. Let's take a look at backward driving case first. For example, the robot is lifting very heavy object and it's kneeling down a bit by bit. In this case, if the transmission efficiency is bad, there would be large friction in the transmission that helps with withstanding the load. Look at the red graph. 
As the transmission efficiency gets lower, the force capability grows and diverges at the point where the system becomes non-vectorable. In short, friction may help you by augmenting the payload. However, there's a trade-off. We're sacrificing vectorability. Take a look at the impact mitigation factor on the right. Remember that impact mitigation factor near one means the system is back drivable. The impact mitigation factor decreases as the transmission efficiency decreases. These results convey an important trade-off in the design of humanoid. Lower efficiency means more payload, but low back drivability and vice versa. Conclusions. To summarize, this paper provides an analysis of the impact of joint level transmission efficiency to system level dynamics. Also, it demonstrates increase in inertia and asymmetric force capability in the presence of friction. Lastly, it demonstrates the trade-off relation in humanoid design between the force capability and the impact mitigation factor. The contribution of this paper is twofold. It provides fundamental formulation that constrains energy transfer in transmissions, and it provides augmented equation of motion that embeds mechanical efficiency of transmission. Limitation of this paper is that it is limited to rigid body systems only. Also, it does not consider closed loop dynamics. Future studies would be exper experimental validation of the concept. Also experiments on highly articul articulated robotic systems that are available out there and design control the co-design co paper and extension to series elastic actuator systems. Thanks for listening.